Good morning and welcome, Peace of Christ Church of Natchez and uh, all of you who are tuning in for the Sunday, November 29th service. This is the first Sunday of Advent, a season that starts the uh, Christian year again, the Christian calendar. Uh, culminated last week with Christ the King Sunday and then starts again with Advent. Uh, Advent means uh, preparation, a time of waiting, uh, expectation for the coming of Jesus. And so Advent is uh, leads up to a few weeks prior to Christmas and the birth of baby Jesus as well. And so we are called to uh, repent and to reflect and to get closer with God to reflect deeply on that relationship and what that means for us as we wait as we anticipate so I invite you uh, to hear these words uh, as we as we get going today the time of waiting and watching is here are you ready we are waiting for the Lord of peace to open our hearts the Lord of peace comes to you this day to free you from your sins we are ready to receive the precious blessings of God. So come and let us worship God who loves us dearly. And let us praise God for God's blessings in our lives. Amen. On the first Sunday of Advent, we uh, would typically light uh, different candles. And uh, purple candles may be blue. Uh, there's usually three purple and one pink. And uh, the first candle today that would be lit would be one of the purple ones. And uh, the theme for the first Sunday of Advent is hope. And so hear these words in light of this first day of Advent. If ever there was a year we needed Advent, this is certainly the year. We hardly know how to describe the year that we've lived through. We hesitate to reflect on all the mess around us here in 2020. All we know is that nothing seems right and nothing seems like it used to be. Nothing. We need Advent. The prophet Isaiah cries out to us, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down to make your name known so that the nations might tremble at your presence. So tear through the mess, O oh Lord, and come down to us again. We long to be your people, a people of hope. And so normally we would be lighting this first candle as a sign of hope. God, hope that you can meet us even in the mess of our world. It's a hope that you still see us, that we feel that we are lost in the rubble. Let this light that we light, maybe in our own homes or spaces, the light that we light within our own hearts be the guide that brings us to Emmanuel, God with us once more. So, O come, O come, Emmanuel. A little bit of music here on this uh, virtual worship. Uh, Lo, he comes with clouds descending. Uh, just the first, uh, the first verse here today. Lo, he comes with clouds descending, once for favored sinners slain. Thousand, thousand saints attending, swell the triumph of his train. Alleluia, Alleluia, God appears on earth to reign. As we proceed in our worship time together, you're invited to, uh, to pause and to reflect who God is and what God does, even in the midst of all that we are enduring. So you might have a prayer on your heart. You might have a, uh, a joy to share, a celebration. That is uh, certainly something that we also do when we offer thanks. We offer joy and thanksgiving and praise. And we also know that we sometimes share our burdens. We have um, all sorts of sorrows and laments on our hearts. And so it's right and good to bring all of these things before uh, our God. As we continue, we have a couple scriptures today. The first is uh, Hebrew scriptures in the Old Testament of Isaiah uh, 64, Isaiah 64, 1 through 9. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. 
From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and in our iniquities, like the wind, they take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh God our Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter, we are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. And then when we turn to the New Testament, today's gospel comes from Mark chapter 13, verses 24 through 37. But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory and he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware and keep alert, for you do not know the time when will, it will come. It's like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And when I say to you all, I say to all, keep awake. As we consider these words in Advent, we're thinking hope is here, but then we get these uh, messages where it seems like doom and gloom. It seems like maybe uh, anything but hope is in these. But we know that there are words of hope indeed here for God's promises ring true, that God is near to us and we take hope. We take hope in these things. We also know that in Advent, we are looking ahead to this hope, which comes in the form of a baby at Christmas. Not just any baby, but the birth of Christ. Reminds me, when I was in first grade, I wrote my first story that was called The First Man Who Had a Baby. It was about three quarters of a page long, and it didn't really uh, have much in detail, of course, not with much space there. And really, um, what little knowledge was demonstrated in this very short story uh, also demonstrated about... Uh, uh, my lack of uh, knowledge of anatomy and the ways of the world. In fact, not so much seemed to happen in the story. And when it did happen, it was fast. It was unexpected. Uh, no one in the story seemed very shocked by the unusual nature of a man having a baby. And, uh, and, and yet people responded and they helped out. Something crazy and unexpected happened in the world and the people responded. Now, we're not told that men will have babies in the Bible, and we're not told that this will uh, be uh, uh, be something that will be unexpected. But we also know that from that, many unexpected things do happen in our lives, and God works with us. Even in Isaiah, we hear that, God, we didn't expect certain things to happen. We did these deeds, but we didn't expect that you would act or act in this way. We also know that babies take preparation and sometimes the time of getting over the shock of what's to come. And so for the season of Advent, which are the four weeks that lead up to Christmas, we're again awaiting the coming of this Christ child. Advent is all about preparing in this way, much like we might prepare for the arrival of a baby and the arrival of something new, something unexpected that God is doing in our lives. So as this season of Advent begins each year, we begin with scriptures, um, we heard today and other scriptures as well, depending on, on the year of Advent, where there are dark and even stark, full of doom and gloom imagery. 
And many of these signs are terrifying and give us a warning of sorts. Now they remind me of how we view safety cones. And safety cones are bright enough for us to see as if to signal that we must watch out, that danger is ahead. But on the other hand, safety cones are, are just as their names tell us. They are for our own safety and are guiding us on the right path. That second perspective gives us hope which is often considered the theme of today, the first Sunday of Advent. And it carries us toward, uh, toward uh, the, the, the path ahead from darkness into light as the season unfolds. So when we look around us, we can ask ourselves then, are we experiencing more fear than hope? All we have to do is turn on the news and surf the internet, talk with our neighbors and live life just long enough to know that we live in a dark and dangerous world. There are many events and behaviors that make us fearful from the pandemic to other disease to economic strain or isolation from divided people to brokenness within ourselves and systems in our world to wars and terrorism and starvation and disease and natural disasters or even change itself. It has felt like the world has been coming to an end for a very long time and for many centuries and millennia. But that is not all of God's creation, nor is it reason for Christians to be stuck in our fear. So how are we to respond? Well, what if we consider that reading these passages and beginning Advent is a sign of hope, and that with this hope, we can prepare for the, pos the possibilities that Christ gives us. We can discover that God is giving birth to hope. As believers and followers of Christ, we too can live into this narrative of hope and live into other themes of Advent, which include peace and love and joy. And when we start with hope, perhaps those other things follow. So what does hope look like? I did some crowdsourcing in the past, and a number of people responded to that question. What does hope look like? One said, a hummingbird coming to the feeder, a caterpillar weaving a cocoon. Another said, my child catching herself and correcting words and behavior. Someone else said, butterflies and also singing songs or simple songs on the piano. Another person said, when the Lord Jesus reached down and grabbed his disciples from drowning in the storming sea. And many others respond. So real hope is not that it, as it might be used in some context says in I hope I get this or I hope that happens. It's not limited to materialism or even short-term wishes or, or wishful thinking. It's not I hope as in I'm going to cross my fingers and hope this thing happens. But instead it's an idea of living with hope and knowing that despite all the bad and the fear and the hate and the pain and the evil that God is with us even in those darkest times and our story will not end there. We are not to be fear, fearful people. Fearful people lash out at others. Fearful people retreat and wait for things to happen to them. But we are called to be people of hope. Hopeful people become active participants in the unfolding story of God's love and one of restoration. Now we might not see it like something out of a Hollywood ending or even one that wraps up tidily and perfectly. At least maybe not in our lifetimes. And as we do sometimes see in movies or in our consumerist culture and mindset, the Hebrew scriptures point to hope. So does the New Testament as Christ points the way. We must choose to embrace this idea and be people of hope. And we're called to be that as we reflect on Advent, but also just as Christians in our daily lives, no matter what time of year. So that when you see these scriptures today in our own church situation, the own world around us, do you see and respond with fear and judgment and wrath? Or perhaps do you see opportunities, encounters, and possibilities? As we take teps, steps toward Christmas, week by week, and as December comes before us and unfolds, may we examine where we are with God and prepare ourselves for the Christ child, as we know that as a Emmanuel means that God is with us all along the way. So what does hope look like to you in this, in this context and with this mindset? Pray that you'll consider these things and that you'll know God's blessings as you engage in Advent and eventually Christmas season this year. 
May it be so with us. Amen. A little bit more music today for us as we continue in this virtual worship and as we consider what it means to be in this Advent season as well. So we're going to look at uh, a very uh, famous uh, famous Advent hymn called Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Come thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. From our fears and sins release us, let us find our rest in thee. Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art. Dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. Born thy people to deliver, born a child and yet a king. Born to reign in us forever, now thy gracious kingdom bring. By thine own eternal Spirit, rule in all our hearts alone. By thine all-sufficient merit, raise us to thy glorious throne. I wish you during this Advent to be people of hope and to go forth to spread that love and to spread that knowledge as we consider and reflect on our own lives and walk with God. May we go through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit now and forevermore. Amen. Go in hope and go in peace.